Your host for the series is the internationally acclaimed portrait photographer, Tony DiGesù. Hi, I'm Tony DiGesù, and I want to welcome you again to this portion of The Artists. The man I'm interviewing today, a moment ago, asked me if I did many interviews with photographers. And I said, no, only artists. And this one is a consummate artist. He is a photographer, he's a writer. Stay with us and we'll discuss Bill Carter's life. William Carter, welcome. Thank you, Tom. I look forward to this program, truly. I, I think we'll start immediately with you and your birth. And first, I must give you my condolences. You were born Christmas Day. Thank you. And I know that all your life you've heard, here's a present, <laughs> Merry Christmas and Happy Birthday. A present. <laughs> Isn't that so? Well, that used to be so, yes. Yeah, now there are no more, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> you were born in 1934. Right. Now, in Los Angeles. Right. A native Californian, incredible. I, I won't ask you about your early, early years, but what was California like when, say, when you were from, you were about 10? Well, uh, you know, there were a lot of Midwesterners that kept turning up all the time. Yes. I remember that. Yeah. My mother's side of the family were all from there. And I never, I wasn't a Midwesterner, yeah. but I somehow vaguely got those vibrations or uh -huh, something. Uh -huh. Much later, I went back there. What state is Midwest? Where was she from? What she was from Ohio. Uh -huh. And they, most of them were from Ohio. And your dad? My dad was from, uh, he was born in Maryland, but he was really from Los Angeles. Uh, uh -huh. He mostly grew up there and yeah. was a businessman in Los Angeles. Businessman? Yeah. Where did your art come from? What uh, happened to you? You know, I didn't start off with any intention of becoming an artist, uh -huh. but it just kind of happened to me. Yes. I had an interest in physics at one time, and I studied that at Stanford for a while, and then I switched into humanities and English. Yeah. And then I was interested in playing the clarinet since the age of seven. Good Lord. Turk Murphy. Yes. What sort of a band is that? What were you doing? What? Do it's the original jazz, you know? Yeah. The, it's, it's the early, it's a pure American art form, really. And it, it's a music from the heart, and uh, there's, well, it's, 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 it's You're true. reliving the jazz that we, I lived. That's true. <laughs> yes, isn't that wonderful? Yeah. What is the attraction? I think, you know, you're speaking about Los Angeles. Yes. Los Angeles is a place that, at least I didn't feel any particular roots there. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a, and there's no boundary, there's no form, there's no river running through the middle of it like you have in great cities, or there's no, you know, edge of it like San Francisco or, or New York. So I think I was looking for something with form and beauty. Uh -huh. And I would go to the Sierras and I would play my clarinet and eventually I began to search through the whole world with, with my cameras. So I... That's fascinating. You started, you got a BA at Stanford. Right. Mm -hmm. And that was the extent, uh, did you have any training in photography, was it? Uh... It was all self-taught. Um, in fact, I never even started until I was out of Stanford, and uh, I was living in Berkeley and doing some graduate work there. And my mother went to Japan on a trip and said, can I bring you something? And I said, sure, bring me a camera. I'll so be darned. Brought me a camera, and I uh -huh. started taking a few pictures of some kids on yes. a schoolyard, and the parents wanted to buy some, and all of a sudden I was in business. <laughs> I didn't even <laughs> You try. were hooked. Yeah. yeah, and then it, f it went with writing very well. Yes, so. yes. But uh, had you, st uh, had you uh, taken courses in writing? Had you, what had, yeah. You're an author. You've published two books. Right. Uh -huh. And we'll get into them later with the proper titles and the publishers and so on. But you, you had studied what? Had you studied journalism? No, I studied English and uh -huh. literature and yes. so forth. Yeah. And, uh, so then I got into doing some magazine writing, and uh, then I became, I worked as an editor at, in New York at a big publishing house there, Harper and Row. You, you, your magazine writing, what was that about? What, uh, well, what subjects? Well, again, later, it, uh, I, this was, let's see, in the 60s, I did a story about the Kurds in Life magazine with photographs. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. The Kurds are people in northern Iraq who yes. have always sort of been separate from the, the government there. Yeah. It was sort of a James Bond. Were these your photographs? Yes. Ah. Yeah. And that was a big break for me in the uh, commercial 
sense. I mean, professionally, to have six pages in Life magazine. Indeed. At so, what age? Oh, I was late 20, somewhere. Precocious. <laughs> Truly. And uh, from then, of course, that then you were totally hooked. Yes, I'm afraid I was hooked even before that. Uh -huh. When I decided to go to the Middle East from New York I see. in 64, uh -huh. I had an agent in New well, York. Who, uh, how, does one, uh, how does one get an agent in New York? You know, this is, is like saying I found two needles in, in a <laughs> haystack. Well, it's, the, it's, it's tougher today, but it, these were people, agencies, that had photographers in different parts of the world. And this was uh, someone that, that uh, didn't have anyone in the Middle East at that mm -hmm. time. Mm -hmm. And it just, uh, it was fortunate. I, was, I'd what? already done two books of photographs in New York of um, smaller scale things, but one was on ice skating and one was on horse shows for oh, Rand McNally. Died. Yes. And, and were these through your agent, or had you done those on your own and then found the publisher? I had done those uh, for a publisher that needed the, the, the pictures see. done. For yeah, book. yeah. Because I was working for another publisher there mm -hmm. that time, so mm -hmm. sort of in the world of those guys. So you started really in the 60s. Really, yeah. And you were in New York as a, as a junior editor? Right, yeah. at Harper and Row. Uh-huh. And I did things... Uh, I was working, for example, we worked on a big picture book about Albert Schweitzer. We were just assembling the pictures yes. that a woman yes. had taken over a lifetime and then yes. text from this side and the pictures and all this. Then we had missionaries that brought back books from the jungles and, yes. and we were trying to put these things together and I kind of got the bug to actually go and produce some of this right. stuff instead of just uh -huh. putting it together. Uh -huh. And I was inspired by Cartier-Bresson, the great French photographer who'd done so many marvelous pictures around the world. So, um, so I started. He, I think he must drive, Cartier-Bresson must drive more photographers out of their minds <laughs> than any other, any other living man. He was very good. Including Ansel Adams. <laughs> Opposite extremes. Yes, yeah. yes. They're both very great. Uh, we're jumping now. Is this one of your Midwest series? That's one of my Midwest yeah. series, right. Uh, that's a little town in um, Illinois, and it's, uh, in a way, I mentioned earlier that it's about my Midwestern roots that I had never quite yes. experienced. And yes. I, after my overseas period, I came back and did a couple of books on America, uh -huh. uh -huh. trying to rediscover some of those roots. This is a little yeah. town with, um, uh, there's a lot of little writing on the, on the windows about yes. uh, keep on trucking for team, Blair on to victory, we'll combine for victory. And what years were those? that I was doing in, in the Middle West Yeah, this series. was about 19, I guess about 1972, yeah. 73. Now, this is your Middle West count, uh, country. Yeah, this is the book for which uh, uh, this was done. Yeah, and it was Houghton Mifflin. Houghton Mifflin, yeah. right. Were you commissioned to do this? No, I started on my own and I got enough of it done that I was able to get an advance and, and, and get a contract. In other words, it. you you did enough to intrigue them to think this 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 chap's worth the risk. Yeah. <laughs> That's marvelous. Incidentally, I'd like them to show this cover, but we'll do that later. Fine. Now, this came after the ghost towns. Right. In fact, I think part of the reason they were willing to do this was that the Ghost Towns book had been quite successful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's a sunset book. A sunset book. And that's still in print uh, and doing very well to this day and really? uh, 10, 12 years later, right? And it's on all the, the stands in the, uh, in the uh, airports and wherever. Uh -huh. There's something about those old towns that are abandoned and that, that really Well, this, this is an incredibly beautiful thing. I think of this more as a painting than a photograph. Truly, it, it is, it, it's, it's worthy of any of the great, the great watercolorists, the great painters of today. Well, it's, uh, it's incredible that those buildings are still standing. <laughs> they look like now, they're um, holding each other up. Uh, Bill, uh, which of the genuine ghost towns? How, how does one know? I, know? I know the book, I know your book, The Ghost Towns, has maps. Right. And one is ghost towns and the other is partial? Partial, uh, where some... In other words, some people still live yeah, there. Yeah, there might be a few vacation homes there along the And then the, the tourists. Buildings. 
Yeah. Uh, then something like Knott's Berry Farm, where yes. that would yeah. be a, a commercial type yes. situation, yes. where they've actually brought pieces of old ghost towns. Right, they've created, created them. Yeah. Yeah. Now, uh, I, I want to ask you about this, because I think a lot of people would be interested. Can anybody go to a ghost town? Can anybody, following these maps that you have, can I, with my monster Eldorado, drive through these rut roads? Well, and, uh, I wouldn't recommend going to that particular one. Why not? It looks like it's You would scrape smooth. bottom about 250 times on the way. That's why. <laughs> really? You know, this, and this is the kind of place that I would like to go to. Now, this isn't a town, it's just a few buildings. Yeah, it's all that's left of the town, out in the middle of Nevada. Uh -huh. And what, There's what? There's a few mining structures over nearby there, and I think a couple of trailers, maybe, or some current prospectors uh -huh. that still uh -huh. think they're going to strike. You know, it's interesting, I think of mines as, as being in mountainous areas. They, and this yes. is this is almost desert. Mm -hmm. Well, you find them. You know, I was in 13 states doing this, and I certainly was in Colorado and Idaho mountains and really rugged places. And you wonder how they they got yeah. up there and got. But yeah. out in the deserts, there's a lot of gold out in Nevada. Now then, how did you get to these these towns? Well, I had a four-wheel drive camper that okay. I used. Okay. Yeah. And uh, a lot of times we'd arrive at in the evening. I like to photograph late in the evening or early in the morning. Yes. Just as, like this is at sun up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sleep overnight there, start work, and then drive the next day to the next town. Yes, that's exciting. And it's, I envy you that experience. And of course, more of them disappear every year, too, you know. Do they? they? Vandals, fire, you never know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would imagine that, for instance, this, uh, this one, wh where is this? Now, that's a town With called Murphy's, and that's a, what I would call a a semi-ghost town. Not it's related to Turk Murphy. Not related to Turk <laughs> Murphy, no. Uh, this is in the California gold rush country. Uh-huh. And it's just, and there's it's something I like about that boy running across yes. there. It's like this haunting, fleeting image. Exactly. Yeah. But uh, that's beautiful country up there in the Sierra foothills. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. 